Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about this saw. Now this particular saw, as of today, has no review on YouTube. So I thought I would give you some of my impressions about this particular saw. Now this bandsaw is the very first bandsaw I've ever purchased, and it's also the very first bandsaw I've ever used. So I have no point of reference, but I'm going to take you through some of the um, outside features of this saw, and then I'm going to use it to rip a piece of walnut, it's about two and a half inches thick, and then I'm going to use it to cut a pattern of a saw handle on a piece of sassafras that's about seven eighths of an inch. So and I'll give you my opinion of what I like and what I don't like about this saw. Um. <laughs> this is the grizzly saw as it comes from the factory. The blade is already installed. And this is the back of that saw as it is shipped from the factory. This is the left side of the saw. And this is the right side of the saw. And this is inside of the saw. Seamed welding here. Not the prettiest welding, but I think it's functional. So there are lots of spot welds in this structure. There's a very little flex in the frame. The saw blade that came with it is a quarter inch, 62 inches total width, and this is probably about 10 tooth per inch. The saw comes in this box. In the package is the table, the rip fence, the miter guide, Now one of the features that drew me to this saw is the select, but when it's on, it's actually casting a really strong shadow towards me, so I can't even see the lines I'm trying to follow. What it needs to do is to be mounted up here or on the side, so be on this side so I can actually use it to see the line I'm trying to cut. Another feature that drew me to this saw is this handle, but after using it a little bit, I find that the handle is quite annoying. The idea is to use this to lift it up from the ground to the top. But I'm grabbing the handle and grabbing here. This is actually a really awkward way of grabbing it. I end up putting all the weight on one arm, and my wrist is like this. It's very this is a, this is a very weak position for the wrist. This handle needs to be moved to about right here, and that would give me two point of contact, one here and one here, and I could distribute the weight on two arms. So this saw has both a miter gauge, a very cheaply made miter gauge as well as a rip fence. I actually didn't use either one of these accessories. I thought this would be useful, but I ended up not using it and just ripping freehand. I paid $190 for this saw, and that is, for a 9-inch bandsaw, $190 is towards the higher end as far as cost is concerned. Most 9-inch bandsaws are going to be in the $120, $130 range. Now, if you compared the 
specifications of those saws with this one, I think you'll see some differences. Another thing that attracted me to these saws is, of course, the handle, the light, and the rip fence. Even though I'm not going to use it, I wanted to try those accessories because uh, if I like it, I might want to, you know, if I ever upgrade to a bigger saw, I might want those accessories. Now I know I don't really care for them. Like many of my tools, this one is made in China. And to some people, that has a negative connotation to it. But for me, I try not to judge a tool based on where it came from. You know, it's a very easy to scapegoat China. I would judge this based on the level of performance I want at the lowest price that I can get. This saw I thought performed well. Now, this is my first bandsaw and this is my first time using a bandsaw, so I have no point of comparison, no point of reference. So what I tried to do was show you some of these images at 1x and you can hear the saw working. And you can hear the way it stresses and the way it moves. And you saw the way the saw cut and you saw the saw marks and that's what I wanted to show you. Even though this saw is a more expensive saw for its size, I think if I had to do over, I would purchase this saw again because it did everything I expected a saw this size to be able to do. It rip cut well and it cut around curves well. That's all I wanted to be able to do. Now that isn't to say one of the cheaper alternatives or more expensive alternatives couldn't do the same thing just as well, if not better. Well guys, I hope you find that information useful. And if you're interested in behind the scenes stuff about the day to day goings of the studio, then follow me on Twitter. So thanks for stopping by. And I hope to see you again.